Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for March 26, 2023 from the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. Last night there were extremely strong southwest winds, so I thought there might be some migration, so I started out the morning at the Braddock Bay East Spit, and the winds were still howling out of the west-southwest, and there was a little bit of activity, you know, some ducks, even had a couple of loons, but nothing too exciting otherwise. I went to the Hawk Watch around 9, and we actually had to set up next to the platform to use it to block the wind because the winds were so strong out of the west-southwest and the west. And as the morning went on, it really cleared up a lot, and by the afternoon, it was pretty much blue skies except for a few scattered clouds. And at the end of the day, the winds did finally weaken a little bit, which allowed us to go up onto the Hawk platform to catch the end of the flight. Here's a long-tailed duck from the east spit in the morning. One of the first raptors of the day at the Hawk Watch wasn't a hawk, but rather an owl. It was this short-eared owl. Short-eared owls are species that we usually get at least once throughout the season, but normally we see them on somewhat gloomy days, so it was a little unusual to see one when the sun was shining a little bit and with such strong winds. Here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk. You can see the faint patagial bars and the belly band. And it's a juvenile, so no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail. It was a fantastic day for turkey vultures. We ended up with nearly 2,000 of them. And it was just pretty steady the whole day with moderate-sized groups. Here's a pair of redheads flying by. The white wingtips of this Iceland gull really stood out on this sunny day. Here we have an adult Cooper's hawk. So you can see the orange barring that indicates it's an adult. The tail, you can see the outer tail feathers are slightly shorter than the central ones, giving the tail a rounded tip. And from this angle, the head looks small, but that's just because the bird's coming at us a little bit. If we saw it more uh, from a silhouette angle, you would see that the head was bigger than it appears here. Here we have a northern harrier. You can see those long, lanky wings, somewhat long tail, and the owl-like face. And this appears to be an adult female because of the heavy streaking that goes all the way down here to the undertail coverts. Here's a horned lark missile shooting by, and we had a few small groups of horned larks throughout the day. Here's a nice look at a female American kestrel, and we can tell it's a female because of the vertical streaking on the breast and also the completely banded tail. Here's a bald eagle that's almost a full adult. Here we have a red-shouldered hawk. You can see a little bit of that droop to the wings. And we can also see a bit of the pale crescent near the wingtip. Here's another excipiter. And we see horizontal orange barring, so we know it's an adult. And we see that it has a dark cap that appears to go all the way down the back of the neck, which is a good sign for a sharp-shinned hawk. We also notice a very squared off tail tip because all of the tail feathers are the same length. So this is an adult sharp shinned hawk. Here we have another exhibitor and what a bird this is. So we actually had members from the Cornell Birding Club visiting and one of them called out that they had a large exhibitor and immediately after another one yelled out Northern Goshawk, which of course this is. And it's actually our first Northern Goshawk at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch in three years. So really cool to see this. Uh, it looked like it was coming in off the lake. We spotted it off to our right, coming in over the pavilion towards us. And as it got close, it, well, you can see it gave us a perfect turn, allowing for photos. How do we tell a Northern Goshawk from a Cooper's Hawk or a Sharp Shinned Hawk? So first of all, this is a juvenile. So it has that vertical streaking on the underside similar to what you might see on a Sharpie or a coop, But notice that the streaking isn't only on the upper breast, but goes all the way down to the belly and even onto the undertail coverts. So that's one feature that you want to look at to confirm Northern Goshawk. Also, the tail is a little bit different looking. They kind of have thinner bands and sometimes they look a little bit wavy. And they have very broad wings. So overall, goshawks are big, like a beautio, maybe like a red-shouldered hawk, but they're shaped kind of like a sharp-shinned hawk in that their head is a little bit smaller and their wings are very broad and curvy looking. So they're a little bit less lanky looking than, say, a cooper's hawk, but just a huge bulky exhibitor, very broad wings, 
and very streaked underneath. Here's another look at the same bird. Again, you notice that heavy streaking and you can notice those stripes on the tail and just how broad the wings look. And one more angle of the same juvenile northern goshawk. Not too long after the goshawk, we had this nice juvenile peregrine falcon, and this one looks pretty big and beefy, so I bet it's a female. This juvenile bald eagle gave us a nice look, and this is typical juvenile plumage. You can see the dark head. By this time of year, a lot of them are um, more faded or paler underneath as they start to molt. And uh, we see that all of the wing feathers are the same age because none of them have been replaced yet. And it's common for juveniles to have a lot of white in the wing pit area. And if one northern goshawk wasn't good enough, how about a second one? This one came through less than an hour and a half after the first. And this one just barreled right on through. He came on by, said, I think it's another goshawk, and just went straight for my camera. As you do in these situations, you don't have time to study them in binoculars when your first impulse is just to get photos. So... Two goshawks in one day when we haven't had any for a couple years. Just uh, really special and really fun to be a part of. There was a lot of excitement, especially from the Cornell crew for the first goshawk, uh, jumping up and down and high-fiving, and I think it was a lifer for some of them. So just uh, really fun to be a part of that whole experience of not only getting a rare bird, but having it come so close that you get a good look and that there's no question at all of what it is. Here we have an adult Cooper's hawk, so notice that it's orange underneath, and notice that it has a capped appearance where the top of the head is dark, but the back of the neck, which is called the nape, is more pale. Here's an adult red-tailed hawk. Notice the dark patagial bars in the shoulder area and the belly band, and it's an adult because it has a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. Compare that to this juvenile red-tailed hawk. Where we, again, we see the dark patagial bars and the belly band that all red tails show. But we know it's a juvenile because it does not have a dark trailing edge to the wing. And it does not have a red tail. And another feature we can look at on these juveniles are these pale windows in the inner primaries. We had a couple of groups of sandhill cranes today for a total of eight. This eagle had me puzzled at first, mainly because of these white spots in the wings which is very close to where the white spots are on golden eagles. So you can imagine as this bird was flapping and you know you don't have a perfect look at it, uh, this could definitely fool you into thinking it was a golden eagle. But actually, it's a bald eagle. It just has some white in the wing pit area. This is an older immature, like maybe a fourth year. It's kind of got that osprey-looking head where it's mostly white but with some dark in it still. But we know this isn't a golden eagle just because of how big the head is and how white the head is as well. Here's another look at the same bird and when it's high overhead we can see that the white is in the wing pit area. It's not over here in the base of the flight feathers like it would be on a golden eagle. So had to take a close look at this bird but in the end we got the identification correct that this is an immature bald eagle. And one last look at the same bird as it was going away and again we can see the white patches are in the wing pit area. Here's another red-tailed hawk. So again, dark patagial bars, belly band, dark trailing edge, and red tail. Here's another adult female northern harrier. So notice how heavily streaked it is underneath, as well as how heavily marked it is throughout the patagial area. Here's an eastern bluebird that flew over towards the end of the day. And this is only the second day that we've had bluebirds. We had two of them today, but as the next few weeks go on, I'm sure we'll see quite a few of them. And we also had quite a few tree swallows today, at least a couple dozen, so their numbers are starting to increase. Looking at the eBird list for today, I had 62 species. And one thing I want to point out is that if you click on the link to the checklist, you won't see Northern Goshawk because it's listed as a sensitive species. So if people report them, you won't see them on their checklist. But if you look at your own checklist that has it, then you will see the photos. And I'll just quickly scroll through the photos in case you wanted to pause and get a look at any of the other angles. And again, this is photos of two separate northern goshawks. And taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 
1,921 turkey vultures, 19 bald eagles, 12 northern harriers, 6 sharp shinned hawks, 8 cooper's hawks, 2 northern goshawks. For Budios, we had 12 red shouldered hawks, 55 red tailed hawks. And for falcons, we had 10 American kestrels, 2 merlins, and 1 peregrine falcon, and 1 short eared owl for a total of 2,049 migrant raptors today, which is by far the highest total so far this season. In fact, we almost doubled the season total today. In my forecast yesterday, I was a little uncertain. I had an inkling that it might be a good day, and it ended up being a really, really great day. So really happy for everyone who was able to make it out. Looking at the non-raptor highlights, we're still getting a small number of snow geese. Had about 19 kill deer. Bonaparte's gall numbers keep picking up. We had 22 of those. Only one cormorant. Their numbers are still low, getting one occasionally. Two great blue herons, 20 horned larks, 40 tree swallows, and three eastern meadow larks, which are always a big hit because they're yellow. People like bright yellow birds. If we take a look at the forecast for tomorrow, not looking so good. Rain and snow showers in the morning, becoming snow in the afternoon. Temps in the mid to upper 30s. Winds northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. So that's our worst wind direction, and it's fairly strong. And combine that with rain and snow, probably won't be much migration tomorrow. In fact, the count might be canceled. For Tuesday, we're looking cloudy early with partial sun late, high around 40, and winds northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. That's an okay wind direction, not great, not terrible. Would expect some migration. And for Wednesday, it's looking great. Hopefully this forecast holds. Partly cloudy early, then becoming windy with periods of light rain, but that's later on in the day, maybe even after the count ends. High around 50, winds west-southwest at 20 to 30 miles per hour. So overall, that's very similar to today's conditions, and obviously we had 2,000 migrants today. We're coming right into the peak of the turkey vulture migration, so... Uh, Wednesday, we'll keep an eye on. It could be another really big day. One last story from the East Spit this morning. It was still fairly dark out, and this bald eagle came across and grabbed this duck out of midair, and it grabbed it, and then the duck was kind of dangling down. It was almost like the eagle had it by one wing. Then the eagle dropped it. The duck plunges straight down into the water, and the eagle's kind of hovering over it, trying to figure out what to do, trying to go down and grab it again. And for whatever reason, the eagle decided to let it go and flew off. And I had my scope on the bird in the water, and I was trying to figure out what species it was. It looked like either a fairly large duck or maybe even a small goose. Like I was trying to turn it into a brant, which would be a nice rarity. Um, But I just couldn't make out what I was looking at with my scope shaking in the strong winds and with it not being very light. And I think the bird was sitting kind of funny in the water because it had, I think its wing was a little bit injured. And so anyway, I watched, I watched it for a while. And then at one point I saw something flying away that may have been that bird. So I wonder if it wasn't actually injured um, because I didn't see it on the water again after that. So kind of an interesting note from the morning. Well, today was a long day out at the hot watch, but I think it ended up being worth it, um, you know, You don't get too many of these special days where you're getting multiple northern goshawks. I think this is only the second time in my life I've had more than one goshawk in a day. The other one being at the Wagoner's Gap Hawkwatch last fall. So really special day, plus a huge turkey vulture flight and a lot of good time with friends. So hope you can come out and join us soon at the Braddock Bay Hawkwatch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.